Hello, my name is Chris Mouflard and I'm a project engineer at Vico Software. Welcome back to the Schedule Planner video training series level four. In this vignette, we're going to show you how to define logic in a network, Gantt and Flowline view in Vico Schedule Planner. The aim of this vignette is to teach you about layered logic and show you how to define logic in Vico Schedule Planner, as well as how we navigate to the network, Gantt and Flowline views to define logic. We'll also show you how to edit and update logic as you see fit when you are scheduling. From Vico Office, let's scroll to the level four in the Schedule Planner workflow to the open schedule. There's many ways that we can define logic relationships in Vico Schedule Planner. Let's start by scrolling to the network schedule view. As you can see, as in any network view, our tasks have now appeared as little box representations. We can use the horizontal and vertical zoom to expand our view in the network view. Alternatively, we could click the center button of our mouse and then use the scroll wheel to zoom in. Now it is a matter of scrolling your mouse over a task until you see the little chain link, holding it down and linking it to the corresponding task that you wish to create a logic relationship. In LBMS, we would use finish to start relationships through each of our tasks, as this is the most effective way to schedule work. As we discussed earlier, LBMS depends on locations being completely finished before new work can start. Another way that we can define logic in Vico Schedule Planner is by heading to the Gantt chart view in the side navigation bar. If you require, we can widen the size of our columns by dragging and left clicking, just like we would in a spreadsheet. It's quite simple. Similar to the network view, we will hover our mouse over a task, select it when we see the double arrow, and drag and drop that task to the corresponding successor activity. This dependency link is a layer one logic link. It is copied between all the present activities, which exists in every location within the task. When we do this, the new dependency dialog will be activated. Within this dialog, we can highlight the type of dependency, which includes a finish to finish, start to finish, finish to start, start to start, and we have combined a start to start finish to finish relation. In this instance, we're going to maintain a finish to start. Here we can also define the delay, the buffer delay, location delay, and level of precision, which refers to the level of the hierarchy that the dependency exists in, the LBS. Buffer delay and location delay will be discussed later in the level five vignettes. Click OK to save the new dependency and begin defining our remaining tasks. Finally, let's check out adding logic in the Flowline view. We can do this by using our side navigation tool or selecting the Flowline view window. As you can see, the logic that we've applied in both the network and the Gantt chart views has been added in the Flowline view. We can tell in this view which tasks are yet to be defined by logic as they remain at the project start date. We add logic in the Flowline view by first selecting the dependency mode in the top navigation path. Notice the dots which now have appeared on each of our task lines in the corresponding location. We start by selecting a green node in the predecessor task, clicking and dragging a dependency line to the corresponding location in the successor task. In this case, it will be rebar to slabs. Again, we see that the dependency dialog is opened. Let's just click OK. Let's continue to add the corresponding dependency links to the successor tasks. Our next step is to review the logic relationships that we just created. I find it most effective to use the Gantt or the network view. Let's scroll back to the network view in the side navigation. We can use the scroll bar to review the dependency links that we have just created in this schedule. The inspection of rebar task is yet to Let's be Let's look at another way of defining this logic. First start by double clicking on the task and we are going to head to the and we are going to head to the advanced function. This opens the edit task function. 
Let's head to the dependencies tab. We can create a dependency in this view a couple of ways. We can start by scrolling in the predecessor column. We can start by scrolling to the predecessor dropdown list and selecting the corresponding activity, which in this case will be rebar to pile caps. Alternatively, we can select any activity, double click to open the dependencies dialog use the advanced function and scroll to the correct task. In this case, it's concrete pile and caps. Click OK to save the new logic. Finally, let's review the difference. Finally, let's review the differences between our flow line and our Gantt chart schedule. We'll do this by selecting the window, new combined view. We'll have the flow line view in the top and the Gantt chart view in the bottom. Let's use the maximize function to open up our view and we can then use the fit to window for the flow line view which will be instantly applied to the Gantt chart view. We're going to learn more about optimizing the schedule in the level 5 vignettes but I am sure that you can already see a lot of the inefficiencies which are more observant in a flow line schedule as opposed to a Gantt chart schedule. In this vignette, we have talked about the five different types of layered logic which comprise LBMS. We are able to navigate to the network, Gantt, and flow line views, and we are able to define logic within each of those views.